So, we will get back to the uh, case study. So, remember we had a case study where the transmission uh, length, the span length was uh, limited by fiber dispersion. And at that point we had said that let us say we assume somehow the dispersion is compensated and we went ahead calculating the total number of spans. So, we are revisiting the same problem and we are trying to apply dispersion compensation to that specific problem. So, transmitter parameters are the same, the receiver parameters are also the same except that I have said now add a link margin of 2 dB in each span. Uh, this is basically to say that um, you may have some splice loss when you have dispersion compensating fibers, so just add a margin of 2 dB. Uh, question is what is the maximum span length? Uh, what is the length of the DCF required? Uh, another additional splice loss is also given, 1 dB per splice is also given. So, the margin is outside this splice loss. Uh, DCF loss is about 0.5 dB per kilometer because the uh, fiber is now modified. So, you can uh, expect that the loss parameters need not be the same. And its dispersion value is minus 170. So, remember we had a, a 17 picosecond for uh, a regular fiber at 15-15 uh, nanometer. But um, for a dispersion compensating fiber, you made the uh, uh, dispersion to be a large negative value corresponding to the same. So, this is D versus lambda. So this was 17 and here it is minus 170 uh, picosecond per kilometer per meter. You are saying that the dispersion is really, really large. So, how do we go about doing the link design? So, uh, we start again with the loss budget. So, by saying that desired be a resting power minus 12, that would require Q of 7. So, the SNR is 16.9 uh, dB, NRZ OK. So, SNR should be greater than uh, 49. So, you uh, plug in the values of uh, SNR that gives you a receive power must be greater than minus 20 dB. And this is nothing uh, different from what we did last time. Uh, one span, no splice loss, uh, additional thing is margin of 2 dB. Uh, so, the loss budget that is uh, allowed is 14 dB. Okay. Now, for 14 dB for an attenuation, so we are not considering DCF as yet, but for an attenuation of 0.2 dB per kilometer. Uh, the allowed length is uh, 12 divided by 0.2. It became 12 because we added a loss margin here. Last time we had not added, so we had got 70 kilometer. Now it has become 60 kilometer. So that's because we added a loss margin of 2 dB. So uh, for the longest link, uh, length in one span is actually uh, 60 kilometers now. Last time we uh, had uh, stopped at this point and we had evaluated the rice time budget and we said that you know this did not uh, respect rice time budget. So that is the case here as well. For 60 kilometer fiber, the total spread is 0.6 nanometer, we are still at 10 gigahertz uh, null. So we take the total uh, delta lambda delta f to be 20 gigahertz. That corresponds to a delta lambda of 0.16, so that is 163 picoseconds. Allowed rise time for 10 Gbps system is uh, 0.7 divided by 10 into 10 power symbol rate. So, that is 70 picoseconds. So, obviously, the rise time that we have introduced by this fiber is larger than the allowed rise time. So, definitely we need to do a dispersion compensation. So, 60 kilometer span does not comply to the rise time budget for one span. So, either we have to reduce the span length like how what we did earlier and we also said that we need to do dispersion compensation. Uh, and uh, this is this reduces span length for use in one span because if you are increasing the number of span even if you reduce the span length increasing the number of spans is going to increase the length and that is not going to solve your problem. So, if you are using one span um, you have to reduce the span length or you have to do dispersion compensation if you are increasing the length of the fiber. So, how do you do dispersion compensation? Uh, so, start with loss. Uh, loss in SMF is uh, 0.2 dB per kilometer times L1. So, let us say I have L1 kilometer of SMF and I need to have L2 kilometer of DCF. I need to find out L1 and L2 such that the loss budgeted is, is also respected and the dispersion compensation is also carried out. These are my two constraints. So, and again I need a margin of 2 dB. The splice loss at the uh, DCF is 1 dB. 
loss in DCF is 0.5 times L2 because it was 0.5 dB per kilometer. So the loss budget is, uh, I can allow a loss of 14 dB. So that 14 must include 0.2 L1, uh, this 0.5 L2. Uh, splice loss at DB, uh, DCF is uh, 1 dB. You basically splice at two ends. So you give a margin of 2 dB. And of course, you have an additional margin of 2 dB. So this gives me an equation uh, 10 equal to 0.2 L1 plus 0.5 L2. So this is my equation 1, one constraint. What's other constraint I have? I know that I am using this dispersion compensating fiber to compensate for the overall dispersion, which means I use the relation D1 L1 plus D2 L2 equal to 0. I am not using the third order dispersion relation simply because I assume it is only 10 Gbps system, so it is only 0.16 nanometer uh, bandwidth. So, uh, it, uh, the, the, in that range of uh, delta lambda, uh, I assume D versus lambda is linear, so the slope is ignored. Uh, so, I know the values of the dispersion of SMF, I know the values of dispersion of uh, DCF. So, I can calculate, uh, I can substitute here and I get the second equation connecting L1 and L2. So, I have two simultaneous equations connecting L1 and L2. L1 should be 10 times L2. So, substituting it here, I get L1 is 40 kilometer, L2 is equal to 4 kilometer. So, from 25 kilometer, which was the span allowed without dispersion compensation, with dispersion compensation, with the fiber that I have, what I am able to do is to make my span to 40 kilometer. I still cannot do 60 kilometer, even though the loss budget is allowing 60 kilometer. Uh, I had to use up that extra loss to support my DCF. So, unless I have a better uh, DCF design in terms of either higher dispersion or smaller uh, loss in the dispersion compensating fiber, I am stuck with this uh, length of 40 kilometer with a 4 kilometer uh, DCF. The next question is where do you place the DCF? Do you place it in the beginning, you place it in the end or you cut it in two pieces and place it somewhere in the middle? Okay? So, uh, all that is allowed, How's, uh, uh, how does it matter? So, if you are placing in the middle, what happens is uh, the dispersion uh, actually accumulates to a large negative value over the first uh, 4 kilometer of fiber because DCF is forcing 170 picosecond dispersion per kilometer. But then in the transmission fiber, uh, it grows at a rate of uh, 17 picosecond per kilometer nanometer. So, uh, you can get to zero dispersion. So, you start with uh, zero dispersion, you accumulate a large negative dispersion and then you compensate that with a large positive dispersion uh, in the anomalous dispersion in the transmission fiber. You can do that or you will allow the positive dispersion to accumulate and at the dispersion compensating fiber after 40 kilometer, you allow the dispersion. Uh, so, essentially you are asking, you are allowing the phase to accumulate in one direction and then in the dispersion compensating fiber, the phase is accumulating in the other direction. So, it accumulates a negative phase uh, such that the total phase is anyway we set is uh, 0. So, uh, pre-compensation is okay, post-compensation is okay, periodic compensations are also okay. So, there was a time when uh, it first were even available with dispersion compensating fibers attached to it such that the loss of the dispersion compensating fiber is taken care by the ECFA also. All these schemes are possible, assuming there are no nonlinearities in the system. If the system is nonlinear, if there are some nonlinear behavior in the system, uh, then uh, the placement will start mattering. Now, what exactly is this nonlinear behavior of the system? That is our next module. So, the question is again find the total number of spans. The total number of span is uh, limited by the EDFA, noise figure of the EDFA. So, that calculation is actually exactly identical to yesterday's calculation except that today we had an additional uh, loss margin. So, uh, the number of spans uh, turns out to be uh, 25. That this calculation, the dispersion compensation fiber has not changed this calculation at all simply because the total loss margin remained the same and the number of spans is decided only by the uh, loss margin. So, that remains the same. The question is, uh, you know, we were limited to 40 kilometer uh, in a span length, uh, but how do we potentially increase the span length? 
with dispersion compensating. So either we use, as we said, dispersion compensating fiber with very high value of dispersion and low loss, or what we could do is to increase the loss budget. Now, how do you increase the allowed uh, loss budget? Uh, at the receiver, the uh, sensitivity is fixed based on the BER that you need. So, which means you need to do something at the transmitter. So, if you can increase the power in the transmitter, we had say, minus 6 dBm power in the transmitter earlier. If you can increase that, so so we had my we had a requirement of minus 20 dBm at the receiver, and we had minus 6 dBm at the transmitter, right? And this gave us a margin of 14 dB. The only way to increase the length now is to actually increase this margin. So how can we increase this margin? This cannot be changed. This is decided by the BER requirement we have. So one way is of actually reduce the BER requirement. Uh, you say that instead of minus 12, okay, I do some kind of forward error correction. I can compensate for... Uh, uh, you know the errors by doing in the software uh, by doing error correction codes and I do not demand an SNR of uh, you know uh, 49 I can uh, sorry uh, Q square of 49 which is SNR of 49 I can work with SNRs of uh, you know much smaller numbers uh, if I can uh, ready to sacrifice there that's one way to do that's what current systems that's what upgraded systems do but uh, the other way is also to increase the transmit power. Can I put a pre-amplifier just at, at the transmitter instead of taking minus 6 dBm? Can I go to 0 dBm, 10 dBm, etc.? I can increase the transmitted power and increase my span. Uh, so I can do that. Uh, so let's see what happens there. So let the transmit power becomes, let's say my from minus 6 dBm, I made it 0 dBm, which means from 14 dB, uh, from 14 dB budget, loss budget, I got an uh, advantage of uh, 6 dB more, uh, so I get a loss budget of 20 dB now to work with. So if I have a loss budget of 20 dB to work with, I do redo the same calculation. From 60, I went to 64. No, sorry, from 40 kilometer, I went to 64 kilometer. That's a large jump, right? And of course, the dispersion compensating fiber requirement also has increased because now I have propagating through long length of fiber. So that's okay. What happens to the number of spans? So the gain required in each span is now 20 dB. But the, so the gain has changed. Uh, so uh, th these numbers are similar to last time, right? So uh, the gain has changed now, uh, but the transmit, uh, the PS out, the transmit power also has correspondingly changed, right? So which means that this total, this total has not changed. So it means that the total number of spans remains the same, that is still 25, which is a very interesting result. So this is how you go about designing uh, spans of uh, longer length. The question is, uh, can I? what limits from uh, me from increasing the uh, number of uh, spans? I mean, what limits me increasing the length by uh, further, uh, uh, by uh, from 64 kilometer? What if I want 100 kilometer? The answer is that either you change your DCF or you can change the transmit power. Can I go on increasing the transmit power? Can I go on uh, making it uh, 0 dBm, 10 dBm, etc.? So what is the limit on the transmit power? So the limit on the transmit power is non-linearities in the fiber. So this is a topic for the next module uh, to see what are the different non-linear effects that affects the fiber. But uh, the, at the end of the uh, day, we will see that the total transmit power is limited to 10 d uh, 0 dBm in any single mode fiber. Right? So the rule of thumb is that you limit your transmit power to 0 dBm to avoid nonlinear effects. Okay? So you don't want to initiate nonlinear effects, create more complications in the system and then correct for it. So you could use uh, a large number of 0 dBm in the system. So the case study we have seen, the only way to improve the, num uh, uh, the link length uh, of one span is to use a better DCF, right? So that the, uh, the loss is uh, not wasted, the loss budget is not wasted on the DCF, but it is uh, utilized to cover more length of the transmission fiber. Uh,